Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ayu ala habita fillah Al-Hafidh ibn Rajib rahimahullah ta'ala said in his kitab the difference between advising and condemning we reached a portion of the treaties where he was discussing the forms of it, uh, advising the different ways in which we advise and whether it's mazmum or mamduh whether it's praiseworthy or whether it is sinful he said, Rahimullah ta'ala, <clears throat> if it is understand from, understood from someone that he intends with his refutation of the scholars to advise sincerely towards Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it is obligatory that he be treated with kindness, respect, and veneration, just as was done by all the Muslim imams whose mention and examples were stated previously, as well as those who followed them in goodness. And if it is understood from someone that he desires with his refuting of them, to defame, slander, and expose their faults, then he deserves to be confronted with disciplinary action so that he and his likes will be prevented from these grotesque, forbidden actions. So this is actually a, a very, uh, very important statement by Imam Ibn Rajib showing us that it is not praiseworthy to be extreme and to attack and belittle and defame and slander and expose people's faults. That is not something that's praiseworthy. But rather, it is praiseworthy when someone, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, warns against the mistakes of someone, warns against the innovations of someone, warns against the innovator, his or herself, due to their harm in and incorrect depiction of the Islamic religion. So for example, when we talk about the extremists, like these groups like Boko Haram, uh, uh, Al-Shabaab in Somalia, and other groups as a group, or individuals who support them, or individuals who are members of them. We talk about their bid'ah and their evil because their evil and their bid'ah affects the whole Muslim ummah. And in fact, it affects the world community because they, more importantly, portray Islam in a wicked way, as if Islam is wicked and extreme and so forth. And Islam is free from that. So it's important that we expose their evils and speak about it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in accordance with the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the methodology of the salaf in order to come closer to Allah and in order to defend the religion of Islam from their wicked and evil actions. Then the Imam said, this intention can be recognized at times by the affirmation and acknowledgement of one refuting and at times by hints that are given in his actions and statements. So whoever is known for his knowledge, religious characteristics, respect and esteem for the imams of, of the Muslims, he will not state a refutation nor a clarification of an error except in the manner in which other scholars see proper. See it proper. With regards to books and works of research, it is an obligation for one to understand the author's words as having the intention mentioned in the first case. And whoever takes his words to mean something other than that, while his condition is like that which has been stated of good, then he is from those who think evil and suspicious thoughts about one who is innocent. And this is from the types of suspicion that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has forbidden. So, he falls under the saying of Allah, the most perfect. And whoever earns a fault or a sin and then accuses or throws it at onto someone else who's innocent, he is indeed burdened himself with falsehood and a manifest sin. This is absolutely imperative we understand this ayat that Ibn Rajib, he yastadilla bi ala tahreem al ghiba wa tahreem al namima wa tahreem al ghiba ghiba to ulama that he used this as evidence 
to illustrate the impermissibility of speaking ill and backbiting and slandering the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. And just even this very day, I came across statements about one of our ulama, Sheikh Ibrahim Raheli, and how many people, especially Tulab al Ilm, that are, uh, and, and others who are unknown. We don't even know who these people are speaking about the Sheikh on their forums and trying to refute the Sheikh, not based on Ilm and, and, and Dalil, but instead following the path of the Shaitan and entering into the differences between the ulama of Ahl sunnah So this is a wicked evil. When they spend time, just think of the sin that they will attain on the Day of Judgment for speaking about someone who perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. This is why even, even about those scholars that you believe are Hizbi and others, you should be cautious. You should be cautious with your tongue if there's no benefit in speaking a lot about them or something, if there's no benefit in speaking about them, then don't speak about them. Leave that to the ulama and those people of knowledge. But the more you engage in that, perhaps you're speaking about someone who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. You don't know. Just because you think they're a hizbi, or you think they've made a mistake, or even your sheikh thinks they've made a mistake, you don't want to enter in that. And I'll give you a real story. I, Me and one of, uh, mashallah, sheikh, Sheikh uh, Abu Abdurrahman, we went to visit one of the ulama of Medina, one of the major scholars of Medina. We went to the Sheikh's house, Sheikh Ali Nasser of Thaqih, half of the Allah Ta'ala. He's one of the teachers of the Haram and uh, I believe a former professor at Jamis Linnea. He just teaches in the Haram, I think, full time now. And the Sheikh, Sheikh Ali Nasser, I remember I mentioned I had a question for the Sheikh, and I asked him about a Hizbi who's well known. Well known from one of the scholars in Riyadh, who's a Hizbi who all, many of our ulama have spoken about and brought the Dalil, written books about him, refuted him in many ways. And I mentioned this to the Sheikh. I mentioned, I said, Sheikh, because I was doing my master's at the time working on a piece of research, and it was about takfir. And I asked the sheikh, and I said, you know, because this particular sheikh, you know, uh, you know, he has kalam, which uh, is, supports uh, the creed of the takfirin, or, or something like this. And the sheikh, this alam, he silenced me. And I will never forget that. And hopefully will keep that as a lesson in my life. He said, if you, uh, if he were to hear what you just said about him, he could take you to the mahkamah. He could take you to the Islamic court to be judged. And then, barakallah fi, our, ach, our uh, akhina, uh, Abu Abdurrahman, he mentioned to the sheikh and he mentioned the dalil from that particular hizbi's own kalam. So the sheikh understood what he was saying and he said sheikh in such and such book he says this in such and such book he speaks about rebelling against the leaders and blah 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 and so on and so forth so he brought the hujja but i will never forget that lesson to be cautious with your tongue even if it's someone you're you don't agree with or someone you believe to be from ahla bid'ah that not to go beyond the bounds and don't speak about them if it's not necessary so this is very important then uh, Imam Ibn Rajab said, this is because having suspicious thoughts about someone that did not manifest any signs of evil is from the things that Allah and his messenger have forbidden, since the one holding the suspicious thoughts combines two things, earning a fault and sin and accusing an innocent person of it. So this is imperative for us to understand, and it shows us the danger. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive us of the many, many sins that we have fallen into. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bless us with ilm nafi, ruskin tayyib, wa amal muttaqabbilan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.